Hello for the second time this week. Since you guys just keep coming, I had to throw away my plan to reach 50 subscribers by the end of the year. So yeah, thanks, but don't overdo it. Seriously, there's no need to rush. Now a shout out to this jokester, by the way, who unfortunately for us commented about a year late for it to be funny. It's the Wild account, so good job, but yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, and please ignore my voice sounding a little different. I'm currently a little sick, but nothing that keeps me from my daily routine. So yeah, now that we got all the informative stuff out of the way, let's give you some tips. The first tip is always use reference. Okay, drawing without using reference can be quite enticing. I catch myself doing it quite often. However, and these are just doodles, okay, where with which I train my memory in order to, you know, manipulate future references in my head so I can make it look like I want. But if you try to learn something, if you don't have like a good grasp on it, then use the reference. It's really no shame. Everybody does. If you're not a hundred percent comfortable drawing something, and I mean that like you're comfortable writing the letter A or something, then use at least some kind of reference, some point where you can look at it and say, oh yeah, that doesn't look right, and you can fix it. It usually doesn't take hours to prepare, and it goes a long way in improving your overall drawing. Now, the second tip is a little spicy, because the second tip is that tracing is absolutely fine. Now, before you go on a rampage in front of your computer, hearing that tracing is totally okay, let me add this. Tracing your own work is okay. Now, why would you trace over your own work, you ask? Well, because almost everyone does it, even industry professionals. It's just called having a sketch layer underneath your current layer. And yes, you initially made the sketch layer without tracing, but we'll come to that with the next tip. Yeah, and that tip is that you should learn basic construction before going into any other part of drawing. That's right, no shading, no lighting, no line work, nothing. Just basic construction. If you haven't done so already, I would recommend you would just take a week or even a month where you just learn construction. All the drawings you do, everything you want to do, you can do it. However, just construct it, don't draw it out. Just construct everything and then you're done. You will see at the end of the month or even at the end of the week, if you try to draw something again fully, it will have transformed your drawing into something on a different level. Because just like you gotta learn the basic anatomy of the human figure before you can draw an accurately displayed specimen, there's a video of that link below if you're interested by the way, you need to learn to construct all that you want to draw. Almost no one draws without any kind of sketch they made beforehand. And it's totally fine. The workflow of professional artists working on something like these, these are splash arts from League, which kind of become some kind of standard when there's a talk about high quality drawings, etc. Well, they, they look something like this. They do smaller base sketches to lay out the scene. They refine some of those by using the base sketch as a guide and then locking in the big shapes to get a feeling of how the final might look. The rest is mostly just rendering, but the main base is already there after quite a short amount of time. And you see, we're back at point number two. They made their base sketch using construction techniques and then they traced over their line drawing to make it look good. Because these three steps are about all it takes to make a beautiful artwork in terms of knowledge about workflow. All the rest is just detailing and rendering and that just comes down to, well, practice and knowledge about materials. And always remember these wise words. If you draw off of a sketch, the final illustration can only be as good as the initial sketch. If you have a poor construction and your sketch looks wonky, you can render that out as much as you want. If it doesn't look right, it's not gonna work out. Now let's get to tip number four, which is do not glorify your canvas. Now for this tip, I'd like to tell you a little bit of a story. The story about how I got into this mindset completely. I knew about it before and I tried to implement it. However, I could never do it completely. 
but one day for actually a totally different reason, but that doesn't matter now. I had a very long talk with a man who grew bonsai trees. Now, we were both quite fascinated about Japan and he told me about this saying. It's called Wabi Sabi. I don't really know where it originated in Japan or when it did. However, it's very good. It means something like imperfections make something perfect and not to always try to make something perfect, but to appreciate the little failures that have been made within the project. It basically means you don't need to make every line perfect. I often catch myself clinging to the redo button until I have the perfect line drawn, only to get the realization that I'll never make the line I want. Most of the time, it's just the best way to go with the flow, and sometimes a few failed lines create a new shape and you end up liking it. Just never try to make your drawings perfect, because they will never be. If someone would make the perfect drawing every time they set their pen on the paper or their stylus on the tablet, there wouldn't be any need for any other artist. Luckily, that's not the case and we all just have to accept our flaws to grow. And now, the fifth and final tip. Draw only when you feel like it. Or to be precise, draw when you want to draw, and don't draw when you're totally not up for it. I don't mean you should only draw when you're fully in the mood and there is nothing else to do, but to set yourself a goal, like a weekly goal of five hours drawing time, and then you draw when you actually feel like it. Don't set yourself a goal of one hour drawing time a day, because you're gonna have bad days where you really don't want to draw, or days where you just don't have the time for it. Make a bigger goal, a bigger number, but also a bigger timeline, so you can draw when you actually want to. That is, if you want to grow your drawing skills a little further beyond your horizon, because you're gonna improve three times as fast if you're actually having fun learning new things, and your drawings are gonna turn out a lot better as well, because you're having fun, and because of that you spend more time on it, without realizing that so much time has actually passed. And as a little side effect of all of this, you won't get as stressed or discouraged as well. And if you're not stressed and not discouraged by your drawings, you're just going to draw even more. It's a triple win situation. Now anyway, have fun using all this knowledge to make your life easier. I wish you happy drawing and until next time.